Good morning. Welcome to Oh yeah. Welcome to Perk Up Thursday. I'm Brooke Lenhoff. I'm the assistant director of the Focus Suites at the SEC Entrepreneurship Center. And this morning we have two very special guests, Eli and Ian White. I'm sorry. White. <laughs> sorry guys. Um I'm gonna let you guys just kind of introduce okay. yourself. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Ian White, and this is my brother, <laughs> Eli White. Uh, and so thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak to you guys today. Uh, we're the owners and founders of Workman Trading Company, uh, based here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, so Eli, you wanna tell us a little bit about the company? <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so basically what we do is uh, we founded our company um, based on the idea of supporting blue collar. So what we do is we have blue collar based apparel. Um, so we have designs such as uh, welding. Um, I'm wearing one for heavy machinery right now. Ian's wearing climate control, which is HVAC. Um, so we do um, it's like climate control. We have different slogans for um, our trades, and we put that on a t-shirt, a hoodie, something like that, and then we sell it to the blue collar community. Um, and our whole goal is represent your trade. Um, so we use that kind of as a tagline, um, just for blue collar individuals who want to represent their trade through our apparel. Okay, so I'm gonna switch the slide here, I hope. Okay, so kind of our story and about us, we just kind of want to talk about how we got started. Um, so again, we introduced ourselves. Eli and I are both graduates from Raymond Central High School, so we both attended. I graduated in 2017, and Eli graduated in 2022. Uh, so I attended Doan College, um, and Eli is now attending UNL. Um, I got my agree degree initially uh, in computer science, um, and I kind of pursued that for a little while, but I've kind of switched careers from what you can tell now. Uh, and then Eli, you're pursuing your degree? In economics. In economics. Um, and so uh, we just wanted to talk a little bit about how we got started, uh, the idea, the execution, and how we kind of adapt to overcome some challenges, and then our mission and kind of what the whole company is about, which we touched on a little bit earlier. Um, so how we got started, the idea, uh, Eli and I were kind of brainstorming one day. We were just kind of working in the backyard, and we were just kind of talking uh, and just kind of hanging out, doing yard work. And we'd always kind of had this idea that we wanted to start uh, a company um, that online, we felt like the online is an untapped uh, marketplace, there's a lot of potential. And so we were kind of brainstorming and we came up with the idea and we felt that uh, the blue collar community and the tradesmen who, who make up that, they're really un underrepresented and there's not a lot of um, good apparel or good gear, you know, that really shows them and it, it shows a good representation of their work. Um, and so we were kind of brainstorming, we said, hey, you know, we think we should do something like this, we think we can help and we think we can make something really cool. Um, yeah, so kind of like what Ian was saying, just building off of that, we really thought that they were underrepresented. Um, so we looked at a few other companies and we saw maybe one or two, like one or two, but they weren't necessarily um, representing individual trades. So um, kind of based off what I said earlier, we, we represent individual trades with specific designs, um, whether as other companies, they would do, you know, support just blue collar as a whole. Um, we really wanted to get in there and um, represent specific trades. Yeah, and so we kind of we we kind of came up with a game plan. We said, okay, we want to get started with this idea. What's the best way we can execute and come up with an idea? And so we did some research for a little while, and I had some experience using online stores and marketplaces before. Um, and so we settled on some software that allowed us to. Uh, make our products and put it online. And so how we did that is we came up and we met a graphic designer who we connected with and we said, hey, we have this idea, we have a few different ideas that we wanna create and implement uh, right away and we feel that these ideas could you know, be good to, as a starting point for us to start our company. Uh, and so we reached out to this graphic designer and he helped us develop a few di different initial ideas and we decided, okay, those look good, now let's go and put them on a t-shirt. Uh, and so how we did that is there's a few, couple different ways of printing. There's your traditional print shop where you go to a, uh, you go to a just print shop here in Lincoln, you say, hey, I want to order some inventory. Here's, I want to order 100 shirts of this design in this size, blah, 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 blah. 
Well, there's another route called print on demand and print on demand is uh, an online service where you can design the t-shirts online and when an order is placed on your online web store, that order is automatically dispatched out to print serv different print companies around the country. And so you never have to carry inventory, you don't have to carry stock, it's all online and it's all uh, really adaptable based on how much in sales you're doing, you know, uh, how much marketing, et cetera. Um, and so we had initially gone with that and we started to run with our idea and we started to put some Facebook ads out there, some uh, content, some digital content, trying to push the idea out and kind of get see what kind of response we would get. And so Eli, you want to touch on that? Um, yeah, so when we first initially um, launched, it was pretty discouraging. Um, we ended up spending a few hundred dollars on our ads um, to try and market through Facebook, like you said, but we only got maybe two sales um, so obviously our ad space was outweighing our sales um, so that month I think that was October mm -hmm. October when we initially released um, and then so we were really discouraged we kind of stopped for a month um, I would say we kind of went back to the lab um, like reassess you know what are we doing wrong um, what can we fix um, and so we really took that month um, to think about stuff like that, and then say so end of November. Mm -hmm. End of November, we realized, hey, um, we should probably get this back up and running. Um, and so this time we went through TikTok initially. Um, for those of you who don't know, that uh, TikTok is a short-form content platform for video. Uh, for video. Um, yeah, so we yeah so we launched on there and the way TikTok works is it has an algorithm, so you don't necessarily have to pay for your ads to get um, onto people's phones. Um, so we released two, I believe. We released one, so there was a swipe, and you got to swipe through our products, and then there was one where we'd have like a funny video in front of it, and then um, it would go and it would automatically swipe through our products. So I think just the one went viral, right? So one of them hit the algorithm just right. We got, right now we're sitting at 2.8 million views. Um, about half that in likes, I think. Um, so that that day, I believe it was the 20, 28th, um, we got, we were, I was sitting in class that day actually, and we had on average around 200 to 250 people on the site at one time. Um, so that was really cool. I was, you know, I was supposed to be paying attention in my in my history of sport class, but I I just had the Shopify um, analytics open and I was just watching it around the world and seeing where everybody was. Yeah, so that, that was definitely really cool to see. Um, a little context on that. We had two followers on TikTok on Monday. It was me and Eli. Uh, and uh, on that following Friday, we were... Uh, 32,000 followers. Um, so over the course of when we went viral on Thursday, it really picked up and uh, people had really taken interest in our products. Um, and so kind of that's how we came up with the idea, how we executed, and then we wanted, we adapted to the challenge there of changing uh, from different uh, methods there. Let them know about your sales. Oh yeah. Yeah, when we went viral on that Friday, so, um, we, again, we, we had really kind of, we did an initial run with friends and family, and so we had always made it, we made a few hundred dollars uh, here and there. I think all in total, we made $1,500. Um, and then when, and that was back in October. Uh, and then when the video went viral, uh, we did $26,000 or $24,000 in a day. And then on the following day, we did uh, 18,000, I think. Um, so uh, it was just really crazy to see, and it was a pretty surreal experience to see that many people interested in, in your products and something that you built. Um, so yeah, it was, that's kind of how we did that. Oops. Okay, so talking about our products, so we kind of touched on that Eli, when, during our introduction, we kind of spoke about those, but we have different gear and apparel um, with specific trade focused designs. So right now we just offer hoodies, tees, and beanies. Um, down there in the bottom left, I have a couple examples of some of our hoodies and tees that we have. We recently just launched our high-vis brand. Um, so high-vis for guys working on construction sites or working on 
uh, different job sites where it's required to have that type of safety orange or that green yellow high vis um, in that design specifically we have our shake hands with danger design so that's really popular from an 80s caterpillar video if you've ever seen that um, for the electrician t-shirt there in the middle we, again we have these designs on hoodies and tees uh, so this this design is stripping for a living we have a skeleton who's stripping wire with a bra hanging on the, on the studs in the background um, and then the, the shirt, uh, the hoodie on the right is the climate control design, which I'm actually wearing right now. And that shows a skeleton working on an HVAC unit. Um, and then over here on this side, it's just a couple of different uh, close up photos of our designs that we have. Um, something you might notice throughout our designs is we're using the skeleton theme throughout and we kind of use the tagline work to death. It's kind of on all of our gear right here. Uh, we weren't initially going to go with that. That wasn't going to be uh, the foundation of our brand. That was, we were actually just going to do this as a limited run. Um, but it's actually just, it became so popular that we decided that this is kind of one of the main channels we want to continue to uh, go down now and that this is kind of untapped potential. Um, and a lot of tradesmen really seem to uh, enjoy the skeleton themed designs. They, I think it aligns well with them and, and, and they really think it's cool. Yeah, um, kind of building off what he said. Um, the thing about the trades community that we found is um, people really are proud of what they do and we want to keep representing people so um, like in our TikTok videos we get a lot of engagement so we'll have um, people commenting and so like there'll be like a top comment with the most likes so that could be hey we want to see we actually had a guy email us yesterday calling us goofy because we haven't responded to him yet. But he was telling us that we got into um, underground mining. Um, and so we see his comment on like every video. Um, we'll have, we, before we dropped um, welding, we had, that was like our most liked one in every video. And so that's the really cool thing about what we're doing is because we've used social media, we can see what people want from us. And so you know, it makes our job a lot easier. We can we have like a little note note sheet on our phones and we'll say we'll count up how many people want you know like the underground mining uh, we'll say you know this this job has 80 comments on the post this job has 100 comments on the post and so it really helps us because we see what's in in our demand what do people want from us um, and so I think that's really cool about what we're doing is just that side of it. Yeah, the uh, community and customer engagement is just, it's huge. You know, that's the whole uh, reason that, that's what we're basing our brand around is the customer and it's around the community around it because those guys are proud of what they do and we, we want to do our, uh, what we can to help represent their trade and, and kind of, you know, make sure that they're proud of their community. Um, so right now we, because we're solely e-commerce, uh, we utilize a lot of platforms for what we do. So uh, we use Shopify. Ian's the big web guy, but we use our Shopify account. Um, it's a, a website that helps you create your website. Um, so we found a template, um, and then we just built off of that. And then we Shopify easily helps us um, you know, upload images, uh, upload our t-shirts, um, set product pricing. Um, it's really easy if we want to like get a limited limited time discount code out to people, we can just go in there, um, set it up, release it, and then uh, people can go ahead and use that. Facebook. Yeah, so I'll kind of touch on the social media channels of commerce, so Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, Facebook and Instagram have two uh, multi, their commerce channels, so we list all of our products on Shopify, like Eli said, but that they also have a native integration uh, with Facebook and Instagram, and what that means is we can sell our products directly on Facebook and Instagram. So say uh, Eli goes and shares a post on Facebook that's, you know, our cool products, you can go into the Facebook app, click on our products, and buy it right away. There's no need to go to our website there's no need to Google it to try and find it you can actually purchase our products right there and so that's really good because you know customers hate having to go oh I have to go here and then I have to do this we want to bring it all down to one simple step and so that really improves the engagement process and improves the customer conversion rate in terms of them actually deciding that they're gonna make a purchase um, and then the other part of that TikTok is the same way so we can actually natively sell our app or excuse me sell our products on TikTok. Um, and then so customer communication, Eli can talk about that for our support channels. 
Yeah, so with Ian doing all of the uh, web design and uh, stuff like that, I've kind of taken over the customer support side of things. Um, so right now what we use is Intercom. Um, so that really makes it easy um, for me throughout the day, especially with school and stuff. Um, I can just hop on my computer and it it's kind of like um, if you have an iPhone, it's kind of like your iPhone messaging system. Um, so it has like a kind of a, a ticket, a, yeah, a ticketing system. So I can see somebody and they, uh, it automatically kind of like where your name, their name would be on the iPhone, it has their subject line where they can put their order number. Um, so I click on that and I see, you know, hey, I want to do uh, maybe a return or something. And then I can read their message and actually on the side of it, um, it has a link, we can link our Shopify account to our intercom uh, ticketing system. Um, so I can, with their associated email. So they say, hey, this is my problem. I can go into Shopify through our ticketing system, through a link, um, view their uh, order, and then I can go in and edit it in Shopify and it's super easy for me. Um, got it, Claudio? Yep, and then so Clavio, is, uh, that's our email marketing platform. So another very important part of customer communication is that constant engagement. Um, and so what, how we do that is we have different email channels. And so say a customer hasn't interacted with our website within a week or two weeks, or let's say even three months, right? It's really difficult in a, a traditional business to be like, hey, how do we interact back with that customer? And how do we, uh, you know, how do we catch their attention again? And so we use different technologies like Clavio for email marketing that allows us to re-engage that customer, send them automated messages when it knows they haven't uh, interacted with us in a long time. And so we're able to capture them again and kind of try and see, hey, we're running a discount on this product or, hey, have you not seen our new products in a while? And so we're able to bring them back to our website and potentially convert them back into a purchase. And then same, we offer phone and email support lines. Um, so if somebody calls, you know, we're able to pick up the phone and help them with their order. Or if they email us at our support email, uh, we can do it that way. And then so <clears throat> the other really great part about all this is we have a really awesome partner for manufacturing and fulfillment. Uh, kind of how this all happened a little going back to our story a little bit. Print on demand just didn't work for us, right? You can't uh, when we initially had those orders come in, we had over 1500 orders come in at once and a print on demand service is not going to be able to handle that in part you have a couple different problems the main one being all of those orders are getting dispatched to different printers around the company or excuse me around the country who says that those printers are going to use the same material who says those printers are going to use the same ink color who says those printers are going to position it in the same place on the shirt right that's a problem that we immediately thought of okay when this went viral Let's stop all the orders on print on demand and let's reevaluate and how can we go and find a partner that we can get these manufactured as quickly as possible. And so we found Shirts 101 here in Lincoln owned by Rick Poor and he really did a great job. We went to him and we said, hey Rick, uh, <laughs> we have 1500 orders. Do you think you're gonna be able to help us out? <laughs> and, uh, and I think he kind of sat there and he was shocked for a while. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's very often that you see that kind of volume coming at once, uh, especially for the number of designs that we did. Um, but when we came to them and we kind of showed them the ideas, we already had the artwork ready to go and say they were able to pivot really quickly. And this was right around November and December, right? So you had customers getting restless about Christmas. They wanted their orders and they wanted it fast, right? And so we, he did a great job. We got all of the products ordered. We had a specific cutoff date, December 12th, and every single order that came in before December 12th we would get it to them by Christmas uh, and we even ha we even did get some orders out after that that it came in with some overstock that we had uh, but yeah they were a really great partner and we work with them daily to handle handle order and fulfillment process so the funny thing about using shirts 101 uh, before that when we went viral Ian was actually going to Cancun Cancun Mexico that week and that you left that Monday, I think, yeah. that following Monday. So we had all of our orders on that Friday. So um, luckily we had Rick. Um, our dad uh, recently just bought his uh, office, new office building from him. So we were really uh, fortunate and blessed that we had um, that kind of connection with them. But um, Ian went to Cancun that following week and we had all those orders and we didn't really have a whole, they didn't have that many people to package them and fold them. So uh, our whole family and a few of my roommates from college actually had to go and help. Um, and I think we probably put in almost six hours a day that whole week um, 
you know, after we would get off of school, stuff like that, um, to go help them package. And it, um, again, we really want to uh, stress that uh, Shirts 101 was a big help in that um, transitioning from that print on demand to um, getting more quality control. Yeah, and, and honestly, I, I, without them, you know, we probably wouldn't be able to scale the business like we like we have, and we probably wouldn't be in the position that we are right now. They did a great job. Okay, so marketing and advertising. This is the bread and butter of our business in a way, and in terms of customer engagement and, and getting our message out there and what our brand's about. It's the it's the really important to us, and so we have a couple different ways that we market and advertise and engage with our customers. We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but utilizing social media is very important. Uh, Instagram and Facebook ads, TikTok videos and ads, and Google ads. So what that is is TikTok. Or excuse me, Instagram and Facebook ads. We're just creating new posts and content to engage with customers. We're showing off product images. We're showing off images of people representing their trade. So what we'll do is we'll actually, we've worked with a couple local businesses here and we'll get photos of them and we'll even promote their business out there uh, and running advertisements on them saying, hey, you know, this is, you know, uh, we've worked with um, Bear Electric here in Lincoln and they were kind enough to let us come down to one of their job sites and actually film a couple of their guys wearing uh, some of our gear. And so we also were able to promote them as well as promote our brand, uh, which is really cool. Uh, TikTok videos and ads. So this one, this is just came up recently in the last couple of years, but we make content and videos on TikTok to help engage uh, with customers. So we make really funny short form content videos. Uh, what we've realized is not a lot of people will stay tuned in for a minute or two minutes watching videos, at least on TikTok. Uh, so short form content videos, anywhere from you know, three to 15 seconds are really what all we need to capture a customer's attention. Uh, and so they'll, they'll look at the video, say this is an interesting product, and if they click on the video, they'll be able to be redirected to our website. Uh, and then Google Ads, this one some of you guys might be familiar with as well. Google Ads is just, put, you know, you search something on Google, say you search blue collar sweatshirt, our gear is going to come up at the top. Um, we're able to use Google AdWords to kind of capture specific results uh, based on that to try and market um, different guys or different, to different people. And then kind of the cool thing about TikTok is um, kind of how I mentioned it earlier, there's the algorithm side of it. So. If you're ever scrolling through TikTok, you'll see it's almost like you're kind of seeing the same video over and over and over because those are the ones that are hitting the algorithm, hitting the ground running, and then they'll get, you know, 100,000 views. The next one, just like it, will get 200,000 views. So one of our um, big ones that we used, there's a movie called American Psycho, um, and there was a... Uh, a scene from it where they're showing off their business cards and we use an app called CapCut um, so we can kind of Photoshop our products into that video and then it, that'll hit the algorithm just like all the other ones that hit the algorithm and then we'll be just as successful as those other videos um, again just because of that algorithm side of it. Um, and then we, so now we just recently started doing weekly releases. Uh, we found that you know, kind of how, I, again, how I said earlier, we have all these people commenting on their trade. We can um, set up a release schedule with based on our demand. Um, so this week, I believe, we're doing forklift certified. Um, it's actually releasing today at 11 a.m. Um, but yeah, we really found that we can keep people's attention in our brand when we um, release weekly because people will comment and then they'll be like, oh, well, when's my trade coming? Is it coming next week? Oh, it's not here this week. Maybe it'll be there next week. And so it'll really keep people engaged with our brand. Yep. Yeah, and so the customer engagement and retention is really important. So I, we feel that releasing every week a new design for a different trade, when those guys come back and they see, hey, you know, this is really cool, but it's not my trade this week, we can potentially get them to say, hey, maybe it'll be next week. And so that's really important to us. Uh, and, and, you know, that's really cool. Um, so recently, this is very recent. Uh, we've actually just sponsored a few different people. Uh, we actually just sponsored a NASCAR driver, uh, Spencer Boyd. So our logo is now going to be on uh, a NASCAR, which is unreal. Um, <laughs> to be to be in business, you know, 
four months essentially and to already be on something like that is crazy um it's a really cool opportunity and so we're really thankful for that uh for that for he reached out to us actually and he said that he liked our products and he wanted to help bring it to nascar because he felt that that community aligns really well with us and our products and we agreed and so we we worked with him and so we're actually going down here to las vegas uh next week um and so he's going to be racing there and so we're going to get some really good content and pictures down in vegas uh, of our products and then with spencer and so we're hoping to work with him more in the future uh, and so we're really excited about that <clears throat> and then we're also working with a local race car driver uh, devin peterson he's based out of milford uh he's a really great guy and so we're working we're sponsoring his car right now uh he works with a couple different companies here uh and a big one that he was just at the other day was 811 the 811 safety show uh, was down at the lancaster event center so he had his car down there and a couple of our products that he showed off uh and so you know the trade community and really engaging with those guys is a really important a core part of our business and so it's really cool to kind of be in those events and uh that kind of stuff and uh like i touched on earlier local business so promoting businesses through our social medias again that's kind of how we've worked with somebody like bear electric or even aqua systems we've shot some pictures with stuff like that before uh so it's great to work with them as well um some of our challenges and roadblocks in our business um kind of like earlier uh our initial launch so we launched and we didn't have very good customer engagement um, because it's really tough with stuff like uh, Google ads um, and Instagram and Facebook ads because we we kind of went into that space and we had really no knowledge on it. Uh, we kind of went in and we were like, oh, well, if we pay to promote this, people are going to see it and they're going to buy. Well, not really. Um, we, we paid for it people didn't buy. Um, so that's one thing that we've really had to adapt to is um, constantly learning and improving every day to make our ads more engageable with our audience, um, especially with uh, Instagram and Facebook because, you know, TikTok, you hit the algorithm. Um, you don't really have a say in that. I mean, you can pay to sponsor it, but realistically, you don't really have to pay for TikTok, but you do for Instagram and Facebook. And so we really had to learn, you know, does how does this work with engaging our customers? Does this image work? Um, do these words work? So like one thing I've, I've been talking to Ian about is uh, getting into copywriting. Um, you know, does this, how does this word resonate with our community? Um, if they see this word, or if they see this sentence, does it make them want to buy our product? Um, does it make them want to represent their trade through us? Scaling. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, scaling with demand. Uh, a little bit of background on that. We haven't been able to keep inventory more than a few weeks, which is just, it's a good problem to have, but it's a bad problem to have, right? You can't, you can't get customers their products if you can't manufacture and you can't make it quick enough. Um, and so the issue that we've ran into is when we print, we've printed a, a more popular designs. We'll print a lot of stock and a lot of quantity. And what happens is, is, you know, we think, okay, this will last us a month. You know, we've printed enough. We don't want to put a bunch of money into inventory because with the summer season coming up, you know, you don't want to put a bunch of money into hoodies when nobody's going to wear hoodies in the summer. And so that's one of the challenges that we've ran into well is how do we try and find the, the middle ground in terms of, you know, a t-shirt and hoodie and what to print and when to print it. And so we are a little more conservative, I would say, than most in terms of figuring out what we want to print because we have so much inventory. We're a newer company and we're trying to make sure that we, you know, make, make our designs um, and it's just as much of them as we can. And unfortunately, when videos go viral, it's really hard to keep inventory and it's hard to keep stock. Uh, and so that's definitely a challenge that we've ran into and we've had to work really closely with Shirts 101 is because uh, when we're working with them and, you know, we run out of quantities, they have to work us into their already busy print schedule. You know, they work with a lot of companies here in Lincoln. They work with uh, the Nebraska sports organizations, a lot of different people like that. And so they have to try and squeeze us in. And so they're really great in terms of doing that. Uh, but that's an in, uh, issue that we've ran into and we're still trying to come up with how to adapt and how to overcome that. 
Um, and then printing and packaging issues. This is one from a customer experience standpoint and a cost standpoint that we have run into that we've seen as a, a major pain point right now that, we're, that we are working to um, improve. Uh, so inventory and warehouse management. When you try to print that much inventory in such a short time span, stuff's gonna get lost, stuff's gonna get messed up, you know, boxes are gonna get switched, wrong orders are gonna get sent out to customers. And that happened to us a few different times. Um, with, with the craziness of Christmas, we actually uh, sent out a few different wrong things to customers. Um, some people ordered a hoodie, we accidentally sent them a t-shirt, we accidentally sent them a wrong design, you know, we ran into issues like that. And so from a customer experience standpoint, you know, they're upset is why did I get the wrong product? And from a cost standpoint, we have to repay for shipping. And so that's a, a pain point there. And we also let them keep the product uh, that we missent sent them on accident. There's no point in us having to pay shipping twice to try and recoup the cost of one product. Uh, and so we're working on improving that and so that kind of goes under incorrectly picked orders picking the wrong thing customer satisfaction so what we've done to improve that now is we've actually recently started using a barcode and inventory tool uh, in our warehouse so we have to scan product um, when it goes in to make sure we have accurate inventory counts but when we ship out the product we also have it so they have to scan a barcode to make sure that they're actually shipping the right product at the right time for the right customer and the right amount of product that's really important because again from a cost standpoint and from a customer standpoint uh, in terms of experience it's it's just it's crucial to make sure they're getting the right thing and getting it on time. Um, so kind of our roadmap um, for future releases and what we want to do. So recently we started, um, we're working with our cousin Dylan who graduated with a degree in graphic design. Um, so we've recently picked him up and he's done, he's been a big help for us. Um, so right now we have him working on um, some hat designs. Right now we've noticed that a lot of companies are seeing a lot of success in hats that have patches kind of like what Ian's wearing. Um, so we want to take our designs, minimize it, and then put it on a hat. Um, right now trucker hats are really popular, um, stuff like that. And then we also, um, just recently in like the last week, we want to take those designs and put them on stickers. So we have, um, kind of with the customer engagement side of things, we have people saying, hey, I want to put this on my hard hat at work. I want to put this on my cooler uh, for work or when I go out. Um, and we've noticed that if people are putting them, are put our, putting our stickers on their stuff, you know, that gets our name out there even more. They're like, hey, this is a cool sticker, or even the hats, this is a cool hat. Um, so we really want to diversify our product standpoint um, from not just t-shirts and hoodies. We really want to branch out and get more products for people. Yep, and then workwear and apparel. So again, we recently just launched our high-vis designs, but we also want to branch more into potential things like jeans, uh, you know, flannels are another one that we're kind of looking at going into. So there's a lot of different things in the industry that we feel like that we could kind of capitalize on and that we can make designs or gear for. Um, and then another thing kind of I spoke about earlier was that summer apparel. Uh, and so it's really difficult to sell hoodies in the summer, especially when it's 90 degrees. Uh, and so those t-shirts or even tank tops, you know, hats are going to be very important during the summer things like that um, and so those are all kind of things that we're looking at and trying to uh, capitalize on here in the next few months uh, selling channel expansion we'd like to start selling our products on Amazon we've kind of been talking about this for a while but we haven't had that uh, the time to be able to sit down and start to do that uh, but that's the next kind of roadmap where we'd like to go is not just selling on one channel but becoming a multi-channel commerce company in terms of being on major platforms like Amazon uh, and then kind of what another thing we'd like to do is start a nonprofit foundation. Um, and so this nonprofit foundation, what we would do is we'd like to organ uh, take a portion of our sales and donate it back to our nonprofit uh, so we can use that money to uh, donate to different trade focused schools and programs, high school programs, create scholarships. Uh, we feel that by doing that, we're not only helping the community and we're engaging with the community, but we're offering, offering them a really good opportunity to continue to love what they want to do and it helps us and it helps them. Uh, and so we're really excited to get started on that here in the next month or two. Um, that's going to be a really great opportunity. 
And then our YouTube series, we'd like to start going around the state and going around the country and interviewing men and women uh, who are involved in the trades. And we want, so we want to shine a light on their stories and their experiences and kind of capitalize on them, uh, what they like to do, and kind of give their background, their stories, their life experiences. Because when you kind of talk to those guys on the job sites, they have so many different stories to tell. It's important to really hear them out and all the things that they like, all the things that they do. You know, there's a lot of stories that uh, they can tell that, you know, you wouldn't know otherwise, I suppose. Yeah, and all of the you know nonprofit and the YouTube series really goes back to why we started the company um, to support Blue Collar. Um, so we think if we start the nonprofit, um, that'll help high school students, college students really be proud of their trade. It'll um, they won't get discouraged with you know fees or you know paying for schooling stuff like that. They'll really want to dive into their trade. We don't want to have have them to worry about um, you know paying through school stuff like that. And then the YouTube series, we again we want to really support um, whether it be a company or an individual tradesman. We really want to again help them support um, themselves. We want to get their name out there, get our name out there, um, and really help them out. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so another uh, kind of this is kind of part of the social media marketing side of things, uh, but influencers on TikTok and Instagram, uh, Twitter, whatever it may be, are really important. Uh, influencers usually already have a large following. So we're talking, you know, 500,000 followers to a million followers. These influencers are important because they already have that established customer base, especially if it's an influencer who is involved in the trades, let's say. Uh, so we've worked with a couple different influencers already. Uh, two of them have been female influencers influencers who work uh, as electricians uh, and so we send them gear and apparel and they'll kind of do different videos at wearing our gear or they'll interact with our gear or you know they'll do unboxing videos right and they already have that established uh, customer or excuse me not customer base but uh, engagement base and so by showing you know giving them our product and uh, giving them incentive to um, wear our product or market our product whether it be through affiliate programs or uh, ambassadorship programs we're really building uh, a brand. We're continuing to build the brand for them, but also continuing to build our brand. <laughs> yeah, and so our the other part about our designer is, uh, so our designer is actually overseas, which might seem pretty crazy, but we actually found him through an online service called Fiverr. Uh, Fiverr is like a, uh, a workplace, you know, community type thing where you can find people who different, do different jobs, whether it's website design, graphic design, uh, social media marketing, Shopify stores. There's all different kinds of people, who, freelancers who do all different kinds of things. And so we work really closely with um, him. Uh, he's one of our primary designers. We also use Dylan, our cousin, to do some of our design work as well. Uh, and so we really have two designers on staff right now who are, who are doing both of that. Indonesia, yep, he's located in Indonesia. Uh, so to touch on that first question, I talk to my dad every single day. Uh, I'm definitely, you know, picking his brain about things all the time. I actually, uh, me and Eli pretty much constantly go into the shop uh, since dad's located right next to Shirts 101. Uh, and so, you know, I'll go in there and talk to dad probably for an hour, hour out of the day. You know, we'll run different ideas off each other. We'll brainstorm. If I'm running into a problem that I necessarily don't, you know, know, something on I'll be like dad you know how do you think you would handle this you know because it's great to get that kind of outside perspective from him because he's been in the you know in the game so long he knows entrepreneurship he knows business and you know I, a lot of people that I think we've heard in the community have also said you know that our dad's a great uh, influence to work with and one of the, the great guys in business here in Lincoln so that's really cool um, and then in terms of licensing our designs we have thought about that uh, right now we have all of that we own the trademarks for the workman name we owe the trademark for work 
worked to death and we owe the trademark for the tagline represent your trade uh, so we have all filed uh, with the USPTO on that as we work with an attorney um, I think that licensing w our designs would be cool I think that's something that if we were to approach car if that would be something that they would want to do that's definitely a, a road we could go down especially you know if they wanted to uh, engage our brand I don't know kind of what that would be but that's definitely something that w we could do yep Yeah, yeah, that actually is all stuff that we've thought about. Uh, in terms of Pinterest, we have looked at that. Pinterest does have an online marketplace to be able to sell things. Uh, so we have talked about that. Um, they they do offer paid promotional advertising, so that's really important too. That's definitely a road that we've kind of talked about. We haven't necessarily gone down yet. Um, and in terms of Amazon, we actually have extensively researched that. So Amazon, there's they have different types. They have FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, and FBM, which is fulfilled by merchant. The fulfilled by Amazon runs a couple different fees. Uh, they hold your inventory at your warehouse. They have restocking fees. Uh, so if we were to send our inventory to Amazon, they would be charging us to hold that inventory. If we were to handle the inventory and fulfillment by ourselves, there's not a fee associated with that, with that which is really important. Um, but Amazon does take a, a reseller fee or a, um, a, a connection fee, essentially, which is around 8 to 15%. Um, so it is, a, it is a bite into your profits for sure. Um, a lot of times what people will do when they sell on Amazon is they want to be selling enough volume, obviously, to try and cover that type of uh, a dip into the profits or a dip into the revenue. Um, so we have talked about that and considered that a little bit. Um, but yeah. I think I don't know. Right, that's good. That's good. To answer your question, Steve, when this thing took off, uh, I mean, Eli was going nuts in school. <laughs> and one of the cool things on Shopify, if you have this app on your phone, which they can show you, when a sale happens, it actually goes, <laughs> <laughs> and all day long, it goes, <laughs> uh, Eli's freaking out. Ian's just shaking. He comes running into the office. I couldn't feel my hands. <laughs> and, and basically, they hit the holy grail that day. They knew they were on the side. Um, and so that's when we sat down and we said, you know, we got to stop the effects on it. we got to control the quality. You've got something here. So that's when we went across the street and talked to Rick with Shirts 101. And then because we knew we had something, you know, with the business. Then we started saying, okay, you know, you're a sole proprietorship right now. You're going to get eaten alive in taxes. We're going to get you to a sub S, you know, so I happen to have an account. Okay. We got to get your, you know, uh, we get, yep, yep. We got to get your, uh, you know, the trademark. You know, so we ended up calling a friend who was an attorney to handle those things. So, you know, the business community is key. Anything you can do to reach out to people, because I didn't have that when I started off, and I wish I did. And so I was blessed to be in the position that I was in to help them get this thing going. Um, I hate to admit it, but for the last three months, they outsold me. <laughs> so welcome to Shark Tank. Yeah. Yeah. I go by Mr. Wonder. <laughs> how are you handling, how, are you, how have you looked at your margins, you know, created your price points? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in terms of inventory, how you the inventory, volumes, uh, you always hear that they talk about don't get too many SKUs going yeah. at once. And as you're looking at it, making decisions around that, what are you using that back to your baseline mm -hmm. thing? What are you using as your baseline that along with like we're going into spring or summer? Mm -hmm. And like managing your overstock, obviously, mm -hmm. you're saying we're doing a good job of that. But how about your resources to bring in profit? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That, that whole 
class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'll touch on inventory first and then I'll kind of dive into the profit margin type stuff and how that looks. For the inventory standpoint of things and how we kind of look at that is I'm pretty involved with the numbers every single day. I look at how much and how much how the sales are doing. I look at what our current inventory counts are and I can see what orders are coming in uh, for different products. If we run out of a product, we actually oversell products so we don't actually say it's sold out uh, on that day. We do that for our more popular designs because we have such a good uh, relationship with our manufacturer with Shirts 101 that they're able to work really close with us that we're able to uh, print those very quickly. And so even if we do run out of stock, we're able to capitalize on that. Um, and so, you know, when uh, an or, or when an items on the website says sold out, and if somebody will, you know is discouraged, they're not necessarily going to make a purchase, right? And so, by overselling those items, we're continuing to capture the customer. There might be a little bit more of a delay uh, if if we do oversell those items, but for the most part, we haven't run into any issues just because of how close knit we are with our uh, printing manufacturer. And so that being said, how we get in product for them. So they've had to overnight our stuff a little, a few different times. We actually took every single black hoodie in the Midwest at one point, every single black hoodie from all the different suppliers we had. Uh, and so they actually had to wait to get them out. They actually had to go all the way down to Texas, I think it was, to bring in more hoodies um, to try and get them to continue to keep up with the amount of uh, uh, printing that we were doing. Um, and so from that perspective, that's kind of how we've worked on the manufacturing side of things. Inventory, uh, we, we kind of look at it as, okay, going from into the uh, uh, spring, winter, spring, going into the summer months, uh, how can we uh, do this in terms of, okay, we don't want to keep too many hoodies on hand. Sure, we can keep a few. Obviously, there's going to be a few sales during the summer. We have customers all the way in Norway and Canada who have bought from us, you know, Sweden, uh, Australia, a few different times. And so, you know, we keep hoodies and, and we'll have them in stock for them. Uh, but we'll run discount promotions and stuff like that for our customers here in the United States to try and offload some of that inventory as much as we can. Uh, you know, we could, if we really wanted to, go all the way down to cost. I mean, we won't do that, but that's something that we could do if we really had to in a pinch. Um, yep. And then so we have started looking at overseas manufacturing, not necessarily for printing the designs, but creating custom a custom blend of cotton and polyester uh, for our hoodies and tees. We have looked into that as well. Uh, so we are working really closely with some overseas manufacturers who potentially uh, be able to put our own custom tags on things, kind of much like Carhartt. Uh, custom tags in the back of the neckline, custom tags on the hoodie pouches, things like that. Um, and so that's really important from a brand perspective as well as working with them to make that custom gear and apparel. And then finally, circling back to your last part, the margins. Uh, our profit margin right now, we're operating at about 55% uh, for a hoodie. So that's pretty good. Um, we, again, all of the fulfillment and stuff isn't necessarily handled by us. We do package and ship some of the orders, but we have the way that we have our uh, partnership aligned with some of with Rick, our manufacturer here at Shirts 101. They do a lot of the order fulfillment for us, and so that's worked into the cost uh, per you know per item purchase per package. So that's really how we do that there, um, and so. We're always looking to improve our profit margins, obviously, and so what we can do uh, is, again, working in it with overseas manufacturers, we're able to get product in cheaper, we're able to reduce that cost and be able to, uh, you know, improve the customer product by also continuing to make in increase our profit margins. I hope that answered most of your questions. Okay. <laughs> it was it was really crazy when this thing took off, and when, when Ian went to Cancun, he's orchestrating the whole thing on his laptop computer. Yeah. And there's pictures of him sitting by the pool on his laptop conversing with me and others back here because we're back here freaking out. How are we going to get all this stuff out the door? And he's in Cancun. So how was your trip? No. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was good. I can't say it was relaxing, but <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, and then he got excited. And so I, what did we have at that time? We had two or three designs mm -hmm. when we first Started. Yeah, we initially did a run of five, four or five designs, I think is what it was. Designs. Yeah, and then he got excited <laughs> and released four in the next week, <laughs> and literally buried shirts one day. <laughs> and we—that's when we started having. But we ran into issues with no hoodies. Yep. Literally every supplier in the Midwest was out of hoodies. Had to overnight stuff from Texas just to keep 
Probably yeah. Really just, yeah. yeah to get it out before christmas uh so uh <laughs> when we released that we didn't think i mean we knew it was, we thought it would do well but we didn't think it was going to go like that obviously and the other i guess another important learning lesson from that is is we initially started with three different color variations for every single hoodie now think about that in terms of five different sizes times three hoodies times different skews i mean you're talking hundreds and getting into the thousands of skews right away and not only that, you have to keep the inventory for those colorways and those designs. And so when we ran into that initially, we were like, God, there's the, from a cost perspective, all of our money is going to be tied up in cotton. I mean, it's just going to be sitting there in the warehouse. And so we decided early on, you know, we looked at it and said, OK, which colors of which designs are selling the most? Now, from here on now out, let's cut all of our designs down to one color. We'll finish selling out of the colors that we're not going to be manufacturing anymore. And from a cost saving perspective and from an inventory management perspective, we're going to be able to cut, cut down on our inventory and be the most efficient that we can. Um, while some customers might be dissatisfied that, you know, somebody's, some people have said, I want this hoodie in black, right? Unfortunately, we're not going to offer it in black just because, you know, from our standpoint, it's not cost efficient and it's not effective to be able to do it that way. Have you ran into any issues with like your weekly releases to where a, you know, you don't go, you don't hit the algorithm overnight, mm -hmm. yep. it'll be weeks down the road or whatever, yep. like where your releases don't hit the algorithm until later and then you're sold out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a great question, actually. So we have ran into that. A couple weeks ago, we decided to switch things up and we said, okay, let's try and release our videos this way and let's see if it doesn't. Let's see if it hits the algorithm or if it doesn't. And the video didn't hit the algorithm right. And so we got a few sales off that. We pushed out some e email marketing campaign to try and engage customers. And we got a few sales, but it definitely wasn't anything normal to the volume that we were experiencing now uh, or experiencing previously. And so we kind of sat there, we reevaluated, we said, okay, maybe let's not release it and do it that way. And then the following week, one of our videos that, of our new designs, we kind of released it the old way that we did it and it hit the algorithm right. And then, yeah, and that same design picked back up and went, went crazy again, even though it didn't the previous week. And so kind of what we, the issue that we've ran into there is like, okay, we printed that initial print quantity, say we printed 20 larges, but now all of a sudden we just got an order for 60 larges. Now we have to scramble and say, how are we gonna go and produce 40 more larges to cover those orders, plus print you know another 20 to be able to cover overstock. And so from a standpoint of working with our manufacturer of Shirts 101, you know, they look at that too as, you know, they, we're burying them, right? You know, that's an issue for them where they're having to take on as much, uh, all this inventory for us, have to order stuff in overnight. And so we're trying really hard to do our best possible that we don't run into that situation. And we're trying to up our print quantities now so that doesn't happen uh, in the future. And so that's kind of an, an issue and kind of a solution that we've tried to work with, uh, work into as well. Is there gonna come a point when Shirts 101, when you've outgrown them? How uh, close are you to that point? Uh, I'm not sure, honestly. I, I would say for right now, the volume that they're doing for us is, is, is sufficient. Um, from an inventory management perspective, they're housing all of our inventory at the moment. So we're definitely probably going to outgrow that here within the next few months and have to find a different solution, a warehousing solution where we can migrate to. Um, we'd like to stay probably in the same vicinity as them, you know, right down the road maybe. Uh, but that's really important. Um, for them and, and for us because you know if they're housing all of our inventory that's space for their products and for their for their stuff as well and so moving to a different facility will also help improve our process and, and improve theirs I think so you know time, only time will tell <laughs> they became their largest customer in one month yeah. <laughs> right. and since that time yep. have taken over virtually well if you've heard of Spreetail Spree, they were stocking a lot of product for, for Spreetail uh, who else was in there? Spreetail, Russ's Market, Super Saver, all have products in there. So those products have actually been displaced now, and everything is working. Yep. And Ian just invested thousands of dollars in, uh, where did you get? Uh, uh, basic bins is what they're basic called. Bins. Yep. So he wanted to streamline the inventory and being able to have have it not so cluttered and mixed up. So he bought in, brought in some bin systems that we've put in their facility and now barcoding everything so that they can pick inventory a lot better. And honestly, with the bins that he's purchased, we can store more than what they had before. Right, yep. 
Yeah, and there was a point actually when we first started where all of our designs were on folding tables out and you know, <laughs> scattered along the print shop, you know, because, you know, they would run, they'd grab an order really quick and they'd grab another one and they'd package it and send it. And so it's a lot more streamlined now, uh, but you can definitely see how kind of we ran into that issue of mispicks and grabbing the wrong items and stuff like that uh, when we initially got started. So we have improved it, but obviously we're looking to improve it more. You said uh, earlier, uh, we were talking that you're at this NASCAR mm -hmm. uh, uh, expo would be happening really soon. How, you said you're excited, and I think you passed over that, but I, how excited really are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we're, pre we're pretty excited. I think that it was pretty surreal when he reached out to us. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, you go from being a college student and working, and then all of a sudden you're bumping shoulders with a NASCAR driver, that's that's a pretty pretty surreal. Um, if you would have told me, you know, 12 months ago I'd be in the clothing business, I would have told you you're lying. And if you would have told me I would talk to a NASCAR driver and we'd be sponsoring a NASCAR driver, I would have said you're probably on drugs, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so it's a crazy experience, and Eli and I are both really excited. We're excited to go down to Las Vegas here in the next couple of weeks and shoot some good stuff, some content with him. And we're hoping that you know we can work more closely with him. Uh, a, a part of the stuff that we want to do is also collaborations with influencers or designers as well. So we're thinking that working with him, he might actually be one of our first collaborations. So what that means is we'll release a specific hoodie or design or something like that specifically for him and for his fans. And so, you know, we're engaging his audience, but we're actually capturing his audience and bringing them back to us and kind of introducing his his uh, his fans or followers into our products as well. And so, yeah, yep. And so a part of our contract with him is doing different giveaways for his fans as well. Uh, so they'll run, they run a, they have a 30,000 uh, customer, again, sorry, I keep saying customer, but $30,000 following. 30,000 30, email following list. And so that's what they use to market to their customers. Or, God, I keep saying customers. Sorry. They are customers. I mean, they are customers. They are customers. Customers to us, but his fans. And so uh, to market to them. And so we can capture them and kind of uh, take his fans and convert them to our customers as well, whether that's through giveaways or promotions. When is your roofer? Yeah, <laughs> she likes that easy. Yeah. That is one of the most popular ones, yeah. And have you done the underground cave yet? We have not. No. You're holding off because those are those fa those are those customers yeah. that you're just... They keep coming back, <laughs> yeah. So I've been reached out to I think community college has a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. Have you looked into using them as some of your resources? Mm -hmm. And in terms of your nonprofit, going back and sponsoring scholarships, mm -hmm. You mentioned that at the beginning for that. And the last question I would have is, what are you doing? What do you see happening to keep this fresh? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, you, yeah, you can keep having ideas. And that's your customer feedback. Some of them mm -hmm. come. But we're sitting in this room again next year at this time. What do you see happening to make it fresh? Right. Yeah, so uh, to touch on the make keeping it fresh point, um, we are constantly you know, talking about new ideas. And so the designs are important for customer engagement and bringing people back, right? That's important to capture their attention and continue to do that. But, you know, we want this, this work to death was supposed to be a limited edition run. And so we don't necessarily have to keep the same kind of skeleton theme design anymore, right? We can always branch into something else, whether it be more things like, you know, Carhartt, does more work wearing apparel, you know, leather gloves, stuff like that. That's something. But at the same time, we don't want to segment into that too, because then we're competing against the big guys, right? Right now, we kind of have a smaller market that's kind of, we're hitting uh, it's niche essentially, right? That we're capturing right now and so continuing to capitalize on, on that i think just listening to customer feedback and customer demand is really going to be what's important and key to making sure we keep it fresh and keeping people engaged because continue you know a lot of guys we've even seen electricians be like i love the stripping for a living design can you make another one you know and so from that perspective it, we can always come back and kind of circle back around especially if a design doesn't do as well as we initially thought we can always try and uh re rework it yeah we did a design that was geared towards truckers um, that we released, uh, and it had the wrong truck on it, right? Now, it was a truck that not a lot of truckers drove. Uh, and so it was like, it didn't, it kind of fell flat. We got some sales, but it wasn't great. Uh, and so we were able to, you know, go back and we said, okay, let's kind of go back to the drawing board. Let's reevaluate it. Let's gain more customer feedback. What kind of, uh, uh, what kind of trucks do most of the people who work in that industry drive? You know, what would they relate to most? Um, so that's really important there. 
And then touching on the community colleges and stuff, we've actually had a couple different people reach out to us. Um, there's a, a lineman trade school up in Montana who actually recently reached out to us about sponsoring their lineman rodeo. And so they compete in different events up there. So we're looking at going up to Montana and sponsoring that, uh, showing off our uh, products at the show and creating gear and stuff for them. Uh, so one of the teams that competing, they have around 30, uh, 30 guys that compete. And so we'd be creating gear for essentially 30 guys uh, at that show. You know, they would say workmen and have one of our designs on it. We have a design called pole dancing, uh, which is a line, a couple of different linemen up on a pole. You know, uh, we have those kind of tongue in cheek sayings, you know, that, that we think a lot of guys kind of emulate. with. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's kind of how we're trying to do it that way. And so, you know, uh, by going to those different events, we're you know, promoting our products, but we're also keeping things fresh and engaging a whole new customer base or people who may have potentially never heard to us, to our brand, essentially. One of the things that I think is, is interesting is that some of the designs maybe that didn't release, that maybe took off a month ago, the sales are still strong today, and yet they're not doing a new release of that design. So I think what they're experiencing is People have purchased that or that was given to them at Christmas, they wear it to the work and they're a plumber and then their buddy sees it, where'd you get that? Workman. So now they're getting sales off of that, which didn't cost them a dime, it's just word of mouth. So you just completed a sale. Right now? Yeah. I was actually just posting our marketing video right now. <laughs> yeah, it is after 11. Seven hours late. <laughs> you need to get your release. Did you not release it yet? I, didn't, I set up all, so uh, that's another thing that I could talk about. All of our stuff is usually automated to release. Uh, and so all of our Instagram posts and stuff like that are automated. But I ran into a thing where uh, if you automate a TikTok video, the quality is not as good and the algorithm doesn't pick it up. Uh, and so I just posted it right now. So <laughs> you guys are live for to see that. <laughs> Kind of put this all in perspective, you know, from a dad's being a proud dad. You know, the month of December, I mean, these guys did like twenty-six thousand dollars December first in sales. They finished the month of December at two hundred and six thousand dollars, I should say, and have been strong ever since. So this thing has been surreal. When Ian says surreal, it's it's we've been blessed. The cost of education has. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I uh, I would say that it was kind of funny when this started. A lot of people, you you think about you know people that doubt you or people that you know say you can't do it, right? That's the kind of thing that entrepreneurs face sometimes. Is people say you can't do stuff or or all oh, that idea will never work, right? When we had that initial first run of the month, people came up to me and Eli and were like, oh. No, oh, that was just, you know, maybe it's a one-time thing, right? You know, maybe it was just for Christmas. It was just Christmas sales. And, you know, we were like, we were like, well, let's just continue to do it. You know, we really felt that we had something and that the community that we were building is just, it's it's all about that. And just the idea, again, it's, it's, it's kind of cheesy to say, but our tagline is represent your trade. And just the passion that those guys put into their work, you know, it's just, it's underrepresented and we're doing the best that we can to kind of bring that, uh, bring that, that, to representation essentially so you know yeah we do we haven't we haven't done auto mechanics specifically yet we have gotten a lot of feedback yet so we, we did do a design uh, American muscle um, and so that's a, a classic Mustang it's actually on the first slide there that was one of the ones that we did yeah yeah so that was one of the first ones we did and then we also have a diesel mechanic design that we released recently um, I'll try and do this I'll try not to be in front of here too much uh, SCC's got a great diesel mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> we have many of, trades here. Yeah. Down there. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was curious about is how granular do you get or want to get? Because there's, you know, the trades, but within mm -hmm. those trades, there's so many specialties within that. Right. Like, they used to work at a hospital, and so there's nurses and there's the cardiac ICU, and they right. would love to represent themselves specifically. That's, so how granular do you want to get? That's been requested a lot. Yeah. There's just, yeah, yeah uh, that's definitely been popular. Um, trying to figure out how we can, uh, sorry about that, I should probably. 
There we go. Uh, how we can, a lot of people have been asking specifically for like traits. Like we had one guy asked to be a ro for a roller coaster mechanic, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, that's a cool design, but is there really that many roller coaster mechanics? I mean, who knows, right? And so we try to look at it in terms of what is get what designs are going to iterate or hit the most people, essentially, right? Electricians, the unions are huge, and that's kind of another thing is we're looking to work with the unions uh, potentially here in the future because you know those guys are obviously proud of what they do it's a whole a whole class of you know working people who, who like electricians you know plumbers all those guys we want to work with them because you know we want to create gear and stuff that's geared towards them and things like that so uh, this is our website i can kind of show this a little bit so, so our right here this is the landing page so you hit the website workmanusa.com represent your trade explore our latest gear and apparel to represent blue collar and then this right here is one of the guys that we we've uh, shot here in a local business here in lincoln we went out to wilderness ridge and these are one of the groundskeepers out there so he has our ground control design on um, here we have represent and support so workman was founded in 2022 with the intention to represent and support the men and women who make up the american blue collar workforce through community experiences experiences and then trade focus gear and apparel so we kind of have a short little mission statement there and then here, this is actually the new design that we just released at 11 o'clock. So, you know, there you go, uh, forklift certified. But then we have our shake hands with danger, wet and hard, and built to last. This one, uh, <laughs> click this one here. So, kind of, we have our different sizing, the pricing, and then you know, people can leave reviews, uh, add the product to their cart, and go through the checkout process. And then we have, you know, a, a, a close up of the t shirt. People can zoom in on the images. And then we have a, this is our marketing uh, picture that we use um, uh, on social media and Instagram to kind of promote when we release new designs. So this design specifically was for cement, uh, cement guys. Um, and so, you know, it's designs like that so people can come in and look. Um, and see, we have our different categories here of apparel, hoodies, tees, and then beanies. Um, and then our limited edition, this is actually because this is how we started. This work to death falls under that category. Um, but then we have, you know, stripping for a living. This is our most popular, or one of our most popular hoodies, this and laying pipe. Um, and so I can kind of, I kind of touched on this one earlier and I'll bring up the design full for you guys. But you know, that's our stripping for a living design geared towards electricians, right? And so we kind of have these funny sayings associated with the trade and the guys just really uh, emulate with them, you know, so. All right, so one final question before we wrap up. Steve, you don't have one final? Uh, I, it's been a, a wonderful <laughs> presentation. I've enjoyed the heck out of it. Glad I, I drove 40 miles. <laughs> it was worth it. Yes. Yeah, and I hope we covered everything. Um, we, we really tried to want to talk about all of our experiences and challenges that we've ran into. And if you guys have any questions, you know, you can always reach out to us. Uh, we can give you guys our email address if you want to get in contact with us. Or maybe you want to make some uh, trade-focused apparel, I don't know, for your company. So, uh, uh, Ian at WorkmanUSA.com. <laughs> but, yeah, so maybe you guys feel Yeah, we just um, – you know, thanks for having us. We really enjoyed um, getting our brand out there and meeting everybody. Well, thank you both so very much for being here. Thank you. Thanks to everybody for coming. Um, there are donuts and more coffee in the back, so stick around, um, enjoy coffee, talk with the guys, and uh, we'll see you all next week for Perk Up Thursday. Thank you. Well done, guys. Thanks. Yes, thank you so much.